Welcome to Module 5, Advanced Design Patterns Part 2, in which we'll cover patterns such as CDC, Merge, and the date-based pattern. What better way to determine which columns have changed in your database than to let SQL Server just tell you? The technique for using this is called Change Data Capture. With Change Data Capture, SQL Server tracks all changes to a particular table, or tables, that you have set up. This allows us to only read which rows have changed in your source database. In addition, it's very easy to determine whether that change was a create, update, or delete because SQL Server just tells us. It does have some downsides. The change data capture controls built into SSIS only work with SQL Server. It also requires a little bit of setup work in the database and on the tables that you want to do CDC on before you can actually use it. Finally, you must have the ability to alter the source system and implement CDC in the first place. All too often, our source systems wind up being a vendor-supplied database, and those vendors may have restrictions around the things that we can or can't do with their database. So even if you have SQL Server, change data capture may not always be an option for you. As discussed in the opening for this section, what better way to track your changes than to let SQL Server tell you what changed? The mechanism, of course, for doing that is Change Data Capture. Now, before we can use Change Data Capture, we have to do some setup in our database. First, we actually have to enable Change Data Capture for the entire database by executing a procedure called SPCDC Enable DB. Once we've enabled change data capture on the database, we need to create a table that can hold the current state for our various objects. Change data capture uses a special key that it can keep track of what was the last record you read from the CDC tables. To do that, we'll create a table and the default name that most people use is called CDC states. So that's what I've used here. It has two columns, name and state. After it's created, you'll want to create a unique non-clustered index on that table so that SQL Server can quickly look up a state. Now those steps are only necessary to do once for the entire database. Once that has been done, you're going to need to enable it for each table. You'll do that by calling the SPCDC enable table and passing in the schema, name of the table, and so forth. Once that's done, we'll be ready to use CDC with our table. One of the caveats to using change data capture is you'll actually need two packages to make it work. The first package will be a one-time use package in which you'll do the initial load of your table. In your SSIS toolbox, if you'll scroll down, you'll find an Other Tasks section. When you expand it, you'll see a task called CDC Control Task. We'll drop that on the form into the control flow. If we expand it, you're going to see several things. The first is what ADO.NET Connection Manager are we using? One of the things about CDC is it only works with ADO.NET connection managers. So I had to set up a special connection manager for the project that used ADO.NET as opposed to the OLADB that I'm using everywhere else. Our CDC control operation has a lot of different options, which we'll be talking about as we go through this. For this stage, we need to mark initial load start. And what that simply means is telling CDC hey, this is the first time we're going to be loading data into the table, so set a flag that says this is the starting point for new data. We have to have a variable, which is just a string variable, that it can use to hold our CDC state. Again, the CDC state is a special value that indicates what is going on with change data capture. So once we've set that string variable up, we then need to tell SQL Server how to manage that state variable. Well, the simplest way is to let SQL Server take care of it by storing it in that database table. So this is where that table we set up comes into play. 
We have the connection manager, again, using our ADO.NET connection manager, and then we're pointing it to that CDC states table we just created. And the state name is our CDC state variable. And what this is going to do, again, is it's going to mark a line in the sand that says this is the starting point for doing change data capture. Once we've done this, we can then go have our data flow load the data for us. In this example, I'm just doing a very simple read from the source right to the target. I could have whatever complex logic I needed in here for any transformations, maybe I've got derived columns, what have you. I could do that logic in here. Again, we kept this simple. Once I'm done, I'll need to tell CDC, I'm done now. This is, I've finished loading. You can mark this as the endpoint. To do that, we're going to select our mark initial load end for the CDC operation. The rest of the options are the same. So with this, we have set up our start point, we've loaded data, and we're said, okay, we're done loading data. Now we're ready to start capturing incremental changes. Let's run this first, though, so that we can actually see our data getting loaded in. So if I come over here to CDC, by the way, a fellow named Matt Mason works on the SSIS team. He has an excellent blog post, which you'll find here, that goes much more in-depth than I'm doing here on the design pattern. If you really want to dig into the guts of it, go read his article. So here I'm just going to set it to use our SSIS design patterns database. And then I'm going to come down here and we're going to show we have no data in here. And so now I'm ready to do my initial load. So we'll come over here and call our initial load package and execute it. And this goes pretty quickly. All done. We can come back over here to our SQL and we'll see we have data in our target now. And there's our data. We can even see, as we've done with the other queries, we have our 100,000 rows in both. So now we need to update some rows. So here we will execute some updates, deletes, and inserts. And then we'll come over here and we're going to run our CDC package to do incremental loads. Again, we're using staging tables, so we're going to truncate those. But now we need to execute a CDC control task. In this case, we're going to do what's called git processing range. So our operation git processing range comes back and it tells SSIS, here are the rows that changed. And this sets the starting point for those changed rows. So once it has the starting point, we can fall into our incremental load data flow task. This has two components in the toolbox. One is the CDC source, the other is the CDC splitter. When I open up the CDC source, I'm going to specify what my CDC enabled table is, and it has the same value for captured instance, the variable containing the CDC state, and then this is asking me what processing mode do I want to use. And if I hit the drop down, you'll see I have several choices. The heart of it is either net or all. Let's say a user has made six updates to a particular row since the last time you ran your SSIS package. If you select all, you'll actually see all six records be returned to you within your SSIS package. If you only care about the final record or the net result of all of those changes, you can select net. Most people only go with net because it gives them the information they need. However, if you're in a situation where you've got to capture every single change to a row, then you might wish to select all. Just understand that you're going to have a large amount of rows flowing into your database. With it set up for net, I'm good to go. And it's going to read in only the records that have changed since the last time I did a run. 
the CDC splitter control simply takes that input and if I go over here to my input and output properties you're going to see it has my output for inserts, output for deletes, output for updates, and then an output for errors. All I then have to do is drag and drop this to my three destinations, inserts, updates, and deletes, and these are all just these temporary staging tables that we'd created. After this runs, I come back over here to my control flow, and I'll go into my sequence container, and this is just like we've been doing on all the other packages. We will execute update commands or insert commands from those staging tables to my target. Once that's done, and I've ensured that everything's updated correctly, there's one more thing I have to do. I have to tell SQL Server that, hey, I've now done processing all of these records, so you can exclude these from the next time I call CDC. To do that, we'll use the CDC control again, and this time our operation is going to be mark processed range. And all that's going to do, again, is it's going to say, okay, I'm done reading these, mark these as red, I don't have to fool with these anymore. So now that we've done our updates, let's actually go execute this. I'm going to set this to the data flow just so you can see what's happening. And we'll execute our package. And as you're seeing, we're now updating our data. So we've got our 50,000 new rows, our 5,000 updated rows, and our 2,000 deleted rows. These flowed through correctly. Note, though, the original 98,000 rows, that's the 100,000 minus the 2,000, did not flow through. We're only reading in the stuff that changed, which is a grand total of 57,000 rows. So there's 90 some odd thousand rows that we didn't even have to read. This technique is extremely fast and efficient. It is robust and is the most efficient way of handling your updates. It does have one drawback though in that it does require you to enable CDC on your source. Unfortunately, a lot of times you're dealing with vendor applications and those vendors have very strict rules about not allowing changes to their databases. So as a result, you may not be able to use CDC in your environment. There is one other caveat I should throw in here. The data in the CDC is only kept for a limited time. At some point, SQL Server will purge that data. If you are in a situation where your database gets corrupted, you lose your data warehouse for whatever reason, there is a possibility that you could lose a lot of the changes that have occurred. So just be aware of that.